All right, my name is Justin Dove, and recently in my Calculus BC class, we went over the fourth dimension, which I gave a lesson on, because we use four-dimensional equations after the AP in some further calculus work. So today I'm going to re-explain that lesson and kind of give you guys a feel for what things would be like in the fourth dimension and what that is. So really the title of this would be multiple D or multiple dimensions. We live in 3D, as, as you know. But there is a possibility of such a thing as multiple dimensions, which are further than 3D. And when I talk about this, the key to this is spatial. That's the word that you need to remember. Because if you talk to a physicist and you say 4D, they're going to say, oh yeah, we live in four dimensions. You have three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. And the problem with that is that doesn't really that confuses us because then you have two different ways of looking at things. You can call this world 4D or you can call it 3D. And it, it just, mathematicians and physicists, they won't, they won't be able to talk together. So if you say spatial dimensions, that will, you know, make sure that everyone's on the same plane. So, once again, we're looking at four spatial dimensions today. All right. In order to do this, we're going to use a tool called dimensional analogy. So what that means is, since we don't know what four dimensions are like, we're going to look at what we do know and use that as an analogy to find out what we don't know. So just looking at dimensions in general, and one time I read an interesting physicist definition of dimension, and that is degree of freedom, which I found really interesting because that actually kind of sums up what a dimension is like. If you think about it, in one dimension, you only can move one way. In two dimensions, you can move two ways. In three dimensions, you can move three ways. So it's the degrees of freedom that you have in your motion. So in case you don't know about zero, one, two, and three dimensions, we're going to go over that now. So in zero D, or zero dimensions, you have a point. It's a little dot on the board. And you don't have an equation for this. You can't plot this, you just have a coordinate system. We have an x and a y, or, or an x, y, and a z, whatever. You just have a point. There's no variables in this. One dimension, like a one, would be a line. And in this case, you have y equals one, x equals one. Any variable equals a constant. And it's only one variable, like one dimension. In two dimensions, you have a shape, or a plane, as they call it in mathematics. And this is used by a function with two variables, y equals some function of x. So as you can see, every time you add a variable, you're adding a dimension to it. And three dimensions, moving further, would be like, let's say, a cube. there, which we cannot see. And this is done with z equals function of x and y, where you have a three variable function. So four dimensions, although we don't know what that's going to look like, at least conceptually, should be w or some other letter equals a function of x, y, and z. And that's four variables. But once again, what is the fourth dimension? What would a four-dimensional shape look like? We, we don't know. So we're going to snap down to two dimensions and talk about a place called Flatland. This was explained in a book called Flatland by Edwin Abbott Abbott, who, contrary to popular belief, was not a mathematician, but wrote a book on dimensions and used dimensional analogy like we are today to describe what multiple dimensions of space would be like if they exist, which would be interesting. So we're going to visit Flatland, or an alternate version of Flatland, because his version of Flatland is a little confusing without reading the entire book. All right, I'm going to stick in, in Flatland. Stickman is a 2D person. Stickman has a house. His house is 2D. Let's go inside of his house. He's got a chair and a table. And um, he's got a cup on it with some water in it. Whatever. 
So Stickman's looking at his house. Well, we can see the chair, and we can see the table, and we can see the water. You know, we're looking at Stickman, whatever. Stickman can't see inside his own house. I mean, we can't see inside our own house. So why, why should he be able to? But we can see it fine. Well, the key is his eye. Right here. Our eyes are two-dimensional. And we see everything, everything 3D in our world, we're actually seeing in two dimensions. If you think about it, you don't see 3D. Anything you see, you can take a picture of and put on a flat piece of paper. We just use shadows and things to kind of figure out the depth of things. Depth is implied. It's not actually visible. We just kind of figure it out. So Stickman, if we look at his eye, he has a one-dimensional eye, or a line. So this is his vision right here of the house, the shaded area in here, what he's looking at. He's actually looking at a line. He doesn't see this five-sided shape. He just sees a line because he's looking at it what's called edgewise, or like a worm's eye view almost. If you got over to Flatland and went like this, and you'd look head on at the side of the house. So that's called edgewise perspective. Now, as we see, we're one up from that. We are looking at it from the side. And actually, to him, we're looking inside, because we can see what's going on in this house. So it's important to remember when using dimensional analogy, because that's what it's going to be like when we jump up to the fourth dimension. And we're going to find out that four-dimensional figures would actually be able to look inside of our own homes, which is pretty interesting. So, but it's also important to remember that while Stickman only sees a line, he knows that it's two-dimensional, and he can imply the depth of his house. And he can tell that this roof is sloped because there's two-dimensional shadows and things like that, like we have in our world. So our first experiment with Flatland and Stickman is going to be push a three-dimensional object through his two-dimensional world and see what happens. Because we're trying to tell our friend Stickman about the three, third dimension, and he doesn't understand it. So we say, OK, why don't we give him a cube? Let's, let's show him what it's like. So we're going to take this cube, which is open on this side, but for our purposes, it's a closed cube. And we're going to push it through his world. So the first thing that happens is it's out here. Stickman sees nothing. What cube are you talking about? Oh, we're going to keep pushing it, Stickman. OK, so we keep pushing it. Eventually, it touches the board and crosses his world. At this point, a square will appear to him. Or remember, as he sees it, a line, because he's seeing it from the edge. And it appears for a while. We keep pushing it through the board, which unfortunately I can't do here. But if we kept pushing it through the board, the square would stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there, and then disappear. Now, why does this happen? Well, if you look at it from the edge, imagine you can't see anything to the left and to the right of the board, only directly edgewise. You push it through, eventually you see it, and then it disappears again. So Stickman can't see the actual 3D object. No matter what we try and do, it's just going to appear and then disappear to him. What happens if we did this with a sphere? I don't have anything good to do that with here, but just imagine a ball, like a tennis ball or something, and we're going to push that through his world. Well, the first thing that happens is, once again, he can't see anything. But when it makes contact with the world, just the point, the edge of the ball will touch. And there will be a little dot to him. And as we push it through, that dot will become a circle. And it will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow until it gets to the maximum radius of the sphere. And then it will decrease again. So just think of looking at it almost like at the edge of a paper and pushing a ball through it. So to him, this magical object, which he sees two dimensions, is going to appear, grow, and then disappear again. So once again, he can't understand the third dimension. And there's nothing we can really do about that, because he only has a one-dimensional eye.